Welcome to Fishing Britain. This week we announce the lucky winner of our competition. We go fishing with Jan Porter in punting for a pike. But first, I go down to Big Well Fishery to dispel a few myths by adding additives to my fly and test the trout's reaction. In course, carp and sea angling, they add all sorts of potions and scents to their bait. Now, there is a rumour that this is starting to cross over into fly fishing with people adding things to their flies. Now, a few weeks back, I sent Ant Glasgow Jr. a challenge to try and catch a pike on chocolate trout. Now, he's turned the tables and said, well, let's see what you can do. So I've set an experiment. Rather than go and fish and try and catch a fish on a particular fly, we've got two out, one that's been treated with one of the market leaders' attractant, and the other one, well, just a placebo. We've got a big ledger weight down here. And what I've done is tied two long droppers equal distance. Now we've got a fast sinking line at that end. So we're going to lay everything. This main line you see on the top will be on the deck. And then these two little fabs, because they've got foam in the back end, will then float up. One of them will be treated and the other one won't. Let's see how it works. Right, everything is set. The main line is on the bottom. The experiment can now start. And the reason for doing it this way was that we want an impartial test. We didn't want speed of retrieve or depth of flight to affect. We wanted to test whether the additive would work on trout. Now, to discuss what's going on, I've got Aaron here. Hi there. Right, I put the camera in one spot so we could keep an eye on both fabs. Now the one on the left is the one that has the additive and the one on the right is just plain flavoured fab. Uh, we've sped up in between where not much happens and this clip entirely is about 27 minutes long so we've condensed it right down to the parts that we think are probably the most interesting. Now we've seen this and we've seen results of this having great effect on other species such as carp and other coarse fish. Um, what were you expect expecting? I think I was expecting a very similar sort of behaviour from the trout. But now obviously trout and carp and other types of fish have different flavours that they will like, uh, different types of food that they would probably go for. Now maybe this smell isn't quite right for trout, but um, no doubt, like this fish here, straight to the one on the left, there's obviously something about it that it likes. And I think this, this study of behaviour is fascinating. Now, as a fisherman, you know, seeing this, seeing the reaction of fish actually, you know, coming to your fly and, and seeing the clarity of it. One, it teaches you, you know, how many fish that actually come up. Look at that one. Now he's looked at your fly and then he's turned away. He's looking at the other one. Um, look, he's turned around and again, you know, how many times this happens when you're fishing when you can't see what's happening underneath? It's phenomenal. Yeah, absolutely. And finding this clarity of water is incredible. Right, see that bubble going up? That was the tail of that trout just wafted an air bubble out of that fab. You can see it going down and that other one, as it was dropping down, came straight up so close. That's all I was expecting to see there was the white of the mouth would actually open and close on that, on that fab, but it didn't happen. Look, this one again, looking at it again but just just swimming straight by but did he get a whiff of the smell because now he's turned around and gone straight back to it it's incredible I th there's certainly something in it without a doubt look straight in again turned away last second so it's i mean it's quite apparent now that they're honing in on one yeah definitely i mean the one on the right isn't out of play it's not buried deep into the weeds or anything or camouflaged or look 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 and yes, that he's got it. it, yes. First take, and again, it was the one with the additive. And as you were saying, yeah, even though they're looking that they're really low, the one on the right is still eight to 10 inches off the deck. So, you know, scores on the doors at the moment, well, you can see for yourself that most of the fish, look at that one again, it's the one with the additive. Yeah, totally, every single time. Now this fella here on the left hand side, he creeps in from the left side. Now I think the flow's going from right to left and, and it must be sort of like he holds station just in that smell cloud. Um, and as it speeds up again, you see him just pop in and out, in and out, and he's just holds in that one position. And again, look at them, straight in, straight in, that one. 
Um, you know, we're not keeping a tally of exactly how many goes to one or the other, but you can see that that one, they're de definitely attracting it. You know, we're not getting many takes on it. No, exactly. None of them are really aggressively taking it, like uh, putting it directly into their mouths, apart from that one that, that did have a go at it. But uh, it's very interesting. Such clear water. Uh, look at this guy. Look, he must have seen every fly that a fisherman's ever put in front of him. He had a taste of that one and a taste of that one. And didn't like either of them. No. So, you know, scores and scores, you can see that definitely the one with the additive attracted a lot more fish. Absolutely, without a doubt. Now, we did actually just very quickly before the day ended, we, we popped over to another pool, which is actually a lot deeper. This is 15 foot down in, in this pool. Um, now, you just saw the, uh, the the weight go in with the, uh, the, the two flies attached to it. Now, normally people would probably think that that would scare a lot of fish away, but in fact, it, it drawn them to it. Um, and it's maybe because because they're freshly stocked so they're kind of used to, to pellets landing on the water uh, so a lot of noise kind of rings a bit of a dinner bell and in they come now the roles are reversed here the one with the additive was closest to the weight so it's now on the right hand side we did this just out of my own curiosity because i knew that there was a few more fish in here so um we'll we'll take a look to see see what happens but look straight away this one comes in and to the one with the additive and I can't believe how clear it is at 15 foot down this time of year. Clarity is phenomenal. And just to make me a little bit uh, more aware of, and make me sick actually, to see how many fish that were actually in the lake, what we're looking at here is straight across under the water. And we're looking at about 15, 16 yards. We can't actually see the opposite bank, but you can see how many fish are actually in this, this lake. I think it was probably more the fact that I nearly fell over <laughs> trying to put the camera in the right place. That's why it went all a bit squiffy. But you can even see that there's some stripies down there. Look, there's some perch wandering around, taking their interest. Perch are so inquisitive and incredibly greedy. But see this one coming out, look, like a torpedo from the background there. He's come, he came from a long, long way back, straight on to that one. Look at him. Chew, 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 chew. He's got it. But look how far he took that fly. And the other one didn't move. He's taken it out there. You can see he's actually taken the line, but the other fly didn't move. He's still taking it. He's chewing it, spitting it out, <laughs> chewing it, spitting it out. And it shows anglers actually, you know, how important it is to keep a tight line on a fly at all times. Because look how many times he is actually taking this fly. Look, he's just playing. It's like a puppy with a, with a ball. Look, chew, spit. Then look, this other fish come in. No, I'm having it. <laughs> but disappointingly, that's the one without the additive. <laughs> Exactly. So what are we saying? Well, definitely the additive attracted more fish, but I don't it didn't put any more fish on the fly itself. It, we didn't get hookups, but there's a lot more testing to be done. Keep watching and results will be up soon. Now it's over to my co-presenter Gary to tell you what's next. Hi, I'm Gary. Now it's over to David with the this is Fishing Britain News. A doctor from New Zealand who was out spearfishing was not only attacked by a shark, but then proceeded to stitch himself up afterwards. James Grant fought the fish off with a knife and sewed up his wounds with his pig hunting first aid kit before going to the pub for a beer and finally heading to the hospital where he works. His story has hit headlines around the world. He told reporters, I'm a wee bit shocked about how viral it's gone. I laughed when I saw the cartoon of me fighting off a shark on YouTube. Following the success of the first series of Absolute Match Fishing, it's back on Sky Sports. The first show went out on Monday the 3rd of February at 6.30 on Sky Sports 4. The programmes will take you on a bank with a collection of some of the UK's best known match anglers such as Des Ship, Lee Kerry, Scott Geens and Adam Wakelin, with England feeder team manager Tommy Pickering presenting the action. A brewery has been slapped down by boring bureaucrats after it started a new beer delivery service by drone. Minnesota-based Lake Maid Beer posted a commercial of a drone ferrying bottled beer to ice fishing huts in Wisconsin. Then the Federal Aviation Authority gave them a bell. Lake Maid Beer President Jack Supple says, I'm on the FAA blacklist for now. They're not too happy with me. And these American ice fishers would have needed that beer after they landed this huge lake trout. 
the video of the 43 and 3 quarter inch fish has had more than a million views on YouTube. <laughs> and finally, the second best viral video of the week is this mobile phone footage of a Russian fishing near his village. Well, if it's that easy, I don't know why we bother. You are now to date with Fishing Britain News. Fishing for facts, landing the stories. Thank you, David. Now, you'd never know that you was Welsh, not with that accent. Later on, I'll be afloat with Jan Porter in a punt. But first, it's over to Charlie with Hooked on YouTube. Charlie Jacoby here. This is my weekly roundup of the best fishing on YouTube. Let's go pêche on Ecos, or fishing in Scotland as we cunning linguists know that to mean. With bags of bonus bagpipes and a dram or toi or whiskey, Seasons TV is applying Gallic charm to the Celtic culture in search of salmon. Fairly slap bang in the centre of India, in Gulbarga, these people are fishing for rohu, a kind of South Asian carp. I am always keen to see what they do in other countries. Actually, much the same as us, but with less respect for the fish. Ice fishing is big at the moment in the USA and Canada are not short of ice any more than YouTube is short of ice fishing films. Lake Superior Clear Ice Brown Trout is one of the better ones. For a classier look at fish in the deep freezer, here is Winter Fisker Nord Norge, winter fishing in North Norway, and despite the title, it's got English as well as dramatic scenery. Talking of class, here's an almost Arthurian film made with lots of lovely tackle company money about fishing. Of course, they are flogging you the Certate Reel too, but thumbs up to Daiwa for backing real fishing. Real fishing, get it? I keep plugging New Zealand Channel ultimate fishing, but it keeps coming up with new and exciting stories. This week they are out to take DNA samples from Great Whites. Well, who wouldn't? The carp catcher has been going to the St Ives complex in Cambridgeshire for more than 30 years. Since then, the fishery has matured and many of the carp have grown on to become famous and highly prized. Here's his review. Finally, polar bear fishing is not exactly what it says on the tin. Eddie on Endurance creates a fly from polar bear fur in the National Geographic series Ultimate Survival Alaska. Nice idea, but does it catch? Click on the links to watch the videos or you will find them in this film's description. If you would like to send in a video for Hooked on YouTube, ping me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv Thank you Charlie, and don't forget at the end of the show we'll be announcing the winner of the huge HM Fly Fishing Prize. But first, Morgan and Porter get in a punt. It's Bait Tackle Fish! We're in Bishop's Bowl Fishery in Warwickshire. It's wet, it's windy, it's horrible. I'm back out with Jan. We're after the pike. Could this be the perfect storm? What we've got is a basic 12 foot aluminium punt. These are pretty cheap really, they come from America. Um, I've kitted it out with a few modifications. First of all, you'll notice I've got this pulley system here which goes to the front and that's um, for releasing the anchors. Yeah. Uh, it means I can do it single handed, I ain't got to keep walking up to the top of the boat. I do the back one quite easily. Unhooking mat in the bottom, obviously we catch a, a decent fish, yeah. and it's going to bounce around in the boat, so I've got a big carp on hooking mat. And a few rods in the front, uh, and then in the back of the boat, we've got the outboard, which is a 40 pound thrust motor guide on a 12 volt leisure battery. And it's really important to use a leisure battery rather than just a, a, a car battery, yeah. because it's all about amperage and current and continual drain as opposed to having just that instant burst that you need for a motor. And on the business end, uh, I've got a selection. I'm going for big lures today. This water um, does contain some decent pike. It's certainly in excess of 20 pounds. But this time of year, it's cold. Conditions aren't going with us. Big low pressure coming from a high pressure. So we're going for some big baits. So I brought a selection of my big <laughs> monster baits here. Um, too many to go through, but I've got curly tails. Right, okay, bit of movement. Yeah, bit of movement. And, and that one I just noticed as well, there was a rattle inside it. Yeah. You think noise is important? I think vibration is important. Fish do go on site, but they do have a lateral line which is very sensitive to water pressure and changes. And if you think a, a chub can hear a bug drop off a tree and intercept it, or a maggot going in the water, or a carp can hear a pellet go in the water, for certain, something rattling like that's going to make a lot of difference to a predator. So a whole range of lures in there, uh, too many to go through as I said. What's your favourite? 
Everybody's uh, got a go-to lure. Okay. I love fire tiger. These are like a tiger stripe. It's got that hot orange and that chartreuse. That, that builds up the component. And that's one I'd definitely take if I was on a desert island and, uh, and, a, and a, a handful to take. But um, this game's not just about catching fish. It's about catching anglers. And uh, as you can see... Yeah, you've been well hooked. Spit that out. And I'm going to quickly go through the uh, equipment I'm using today. I'm start off with a bait, and this is uh, an artificial bait, obviously. Um, the spinner bait we mentioned, fire tiger pattern, big spoon on the top, on the coat hang a bit. Jig head, uh, nicely featured there, like a little fish. It's got the flash underneath it. Massive big hook, that's why you need the rod I'll come on to, and, a, and the big latex skirt. Most importantly, when you're fishing for pike, or anywhere there's likely to be pike, is have a wire trace, and that's got a quick release attachment there. And these are very readily available, they're very cheap. I just normally change the, um, the snap there to a, to a cross lock. And then I've got 30 pound braid, and the rod itself is a six foot six, one piece, very, very powerful. It's like a jerk bait rod. And you'll see this is loaded with a pretty unconventional kind of reel um, for most anglers. This is a, a little multiplier, or bait cast as they sometimes call them when they're a different shape. Nice double handle, easy to use single handedly. And um, all together, that's a really nice setup, especially for boat fishing. And I'm going to use today, first of all, a spinning rod, fixed spool reel, because it's easier to use, loaded a 30 pound braid, same as Jan. At the end of that, we've just got a swivel onto a wire trace, and then the killer bait. And the reason I picked this one, well, the reason I pinched it out of Jan's box is because it's his favorite. And that's pretty much it, but we'll get on the water and then um, we'll see how this weather pans out. But at the moment, uh, we're gonna get away with it and we'll see if we can catch a few pies. Come on. It's one for the flap trucker. <laughs> <laughs> well done, mate. Last week we said that we would give away a pile of HM fly fishing prizes, including the all new Four Seasons Boat Fishing, Four Seasons Bank Fishing, Four Seasons Still Water Fishing, River Pattern, Still Water Patterns, The Complete Cast, Fly Fishing Start, Tallura Killer, a HM Buff and a HM Fly Box. You liked and commented brilliantly, and we wanted to give you all a prize for being such wonderfully valued viewers. But one winner we said, and one winner we have. And that winner is... Matthew Osborne! Congratulations, the heavy box will be floating its way to you very soon. Well folks, that's it for another week. I hope you've enjoyed it. This weekend, we're off to the British Fly Fair near Stoke. See how we get on in next week's programme. If you want to keep up to date with all the other programmes on the channel, please go to fieldsportschannel.tv and fill out the constant contact form. Don't forget to like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter. I'll see you next week on Fishing Britain. Welcome to yeah, Fishing Britain here on Field Sports Channel. <laughs> <laughs>